we get to talk to you today about um, cutting do's and don'ts and just how important it is to have a nice cutting system as you get into your hobby of quilting or sewing or anything um, that has to do with using a rotary cutter and a mat and, and why um, this system is so nice. Um, as, as you're quilting, I have my little list here because I don't want to leave anything out. And it's been really fun for me to go through and, and take time to think about the steps and why it's important to have certain items or to use certain items or why it's important not to do certain things um, because it helps me become a better quilter as well. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is, is that when you're starting a new pattern or a new design, how important it is for you to, just let me fix my, this thing right here. It just keeps, something's going on with it. It's just important for you to read through your pattern instruction or your design instructions before you start cutting. And I can't tell you how many times I've been so excited to get this new pattern or new design and get it out and I'll just start cutting right away. And that's a big no-no. So just read through it. And the reason is, is, is that you may miss something in it and you may start cutting off your strips incorrectly. So read through and, and understand the techniques and the instructions. That will save you a lot of headache and save you on that very expensive fabric that you're using um, to cut your quilt. So that's my number one tip. So if you're using a new a pattern or design, make sure you read through the instructions and that you understand that what sizes you're gonna be cutting your strips uh, so that you don't make the mistakes. And then separate your fabrics into separate piles so that you know which fabrics you're gonna be using to cut the certain sizes and the certain shapes. So that's very helpful as well. So use sticky notes so that you don't make a mistake and pick up one and cut it um, the size of the square when it's supposed to be the triangle strip. So that's important too, is just to um, make sure that you mark your fabric so that you know which ones are gonna be cut certain sizes. So if you have a group that's gonna be cut two and a half inches wide, you can cut all of those at the same time. So just make sure that you mark. Um, the second thing um, I wanted to talk to you that I felt was really important is to, before you start cutting, look at your fabrics and make sure that they don't have wrinkles in them. Um, notice that this is a 45 wide inch fabric and that how smooth it is and it doesn't have a lot of wrinkles in it. This one is a 90 inch wide fabric and you can see that the more folds it has, the more wrinkles it's going to have. I don't know if you could see those wrinkles. And the wrinkles will cause your cutting to come off. And so see how this was folded up in the bottom two? And the more folds you have, the less straight your um, strips are going to be and your squares. So make sure that you open up your fabrics and iron them. Then another rule of thumb that you should remember is that the more folds you have, the more wavy that you're going to have your cuts. So it's nice to have a larger mat. It's worth the investment. A smaller mat, you're going to have to fold your fabric more to make the cuts um, on, on your quilt. So this is a 24 inch mat. It's a nice size. Uh, but it's a nice medium size. Most fabrics have one fold on them, which is a 45. Um, and so the, the 20, uh, 24 by 36 inch is a great size to cut. So if you, are if you haven't made an investment and you're planning on investing in some nice cutting tools, um, get a larger mat. It's, it's really important. And get a good solid mat. Okay, so what's nice about the mat is not only does it, is it larger so that you can cut on and they're self-healing, um, however, 
they this one is reversible so as you're cutting 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 you can cut down the same side enough that it'll make start to make um, your mat wear unevenly and so our mats are really nice because you can turn it over and use the other side um, another thing that's really important with the mats is that if it's on a table or a surface you can tell that it will slide on you as you're cutting so you want to make sure that it doesn't slide so to have something underneath that will securely lock it into place so as you're cutting and pushing away from you is really important as well and that's why the non-skid pads are another important investment and this pad right here is a silicone pad and it just makes it so that your mat's not going to slide anywhere. And you can see that it's numbered on this side as well. So it is reversible, so you can turn it over. As you're cutting, try to cut, make your cuts in different areas. Um, I know a lot of, of us get comfortable in one area or the other. But if you move your cuts all over your mat because you have the markings, it will make it last longer. Um, another thing is, is wipe things down. So these silicone mats can get um, dirt on them after a while. So you can just rinse it off and it'll become sticky again. And just wipe down your, your mats as well. Because as you're cutting and making those cuts you, and you're using it more and more and more, you'll see that you get little fabric, shreds of fabric in the cuts. So just you know make sure that you smooth it off with your hand or just take a damp cloth and just wipe it down do not leave your mats in the sun um, the sun is a big no-no it'll make it warp and speaking from experience so learn from my mistakes do not leave your mats in the sun i don't care what mat it is it's just um the sun will really warp it so if you are cutting in a warm room with lots of sunshine make sure that you put it in a closet away from the sun. So that's another important rule of thumb. So let me just look at my little list. And I talked about ironing as you're cutting and using the correct size mat. And let's talk about not only the correct size mat is very important, but using the correct size ruler is also important. Um, with your 36 by 24 inch mat, we have a 30, um, a 24 and a half by six and a half inch ruler. This is a great ruler. It has the holes in it to make it easier for you to line up your fabrics from the bottom to the top, especially if you have one that you're cutting a long strip and it's wide. So the holes allow you to line it up so that you can see your eighth inch marks easily and you can line it up from top to bottom. Then the holes are also really nice because they allow you to hold the ruler easier. And you'll notice that on our rulers that we have what we call a track on them. And this track is really important. Not only does it keep your fingers and hands away from the cutter, which keeps it safer, but it also is very handy to use with our cutters. So our cutters are awesome. We have two styles. We have our comfort cutter, which has a bent shape here. And the bent shape makes it ergonomic. So it's not going to wear on your hand and your wrist. So if you have troubles with your shoulders and your back and your wrist from carpal tunnel to anything with ten tendonitis or any of those problems, you make sure that you try the comfort cutter. The bent handle actually allows you to um, line up your fabric, line up your ruler on your fabric. And then the guide right here on the cutter, you can see the guide right there. It goes in between. So let me see if I can lift it up. So which camera right there? So you see the track right here? This is the track and this is the guide. And you'll see that space in between there. 
that is where the guide goes over the track and it locks onto it so you're not going to veer off in one direction or the other. You're gonna, it's going to help keep you nice and straight and very accurate as you're cutting. So it's really important to have a system that works. Now, you can take the guide off if you need to and use with other rulers, but just let me show you how it lines up and it has a safety guide. So I'm gonna take the safety guide off, another safety feature, put it on there and just cut. And it just keeps it nice and straight. And now I have a straight line that I can cut. So if I didn't have the guide on there, I would just veer off. So let me just show you one without the guide. So this is my dull cutter right here, okay? And I could veer off at any angle. So this system is so nice to have because you'll use less waste on your fabrics and they're very expensive nowadays. And so just make sure, that we, and like I said, we have the straight cutter and the comfort cutter. Now the straight cutter, I thought I was going to have a really hard time going from the comfort cutter because this is so nice and easy to use. But the straight cutter is just as easy to use. So, And it comes with the guide as well. So you'll just slide the safety off. And you'll line it up. And then you'll just put your finger right here. It's away from the blade. And you'll just cut. Nice and straight. Oh, I didn't get it right there. You might need to use my sharpener here. Which leads me into my next thing is to use a sharp blade. So the reason you want to use a sharp blade is that as you use a dull blade, and you can see right here, if you notice right here, the fabric has frayed and is left on the mat. So it is going to cause the fabric to start fraying and you want a nice sharp cut. So a sharp blade is really important. I'm gonna show you with this dull blade here. I don't know if Mark dulled it enough. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> anyway, that's what happens when you use a dull blade is that it's gonna start fraying on the fabric. And then as you sew it, it's gonna have more and more frays. So make sure that you have your nice linear sharpener as you're cutting available. So with the linear sharpener, you don't have to take the blade out at all and you'll just run the blade when it's exposed along inside the sharpener and you'll do it a couple of times. And then you'll turn it so you can do the other side. And it's going to help sharpen your blade. There we go. I just didn't get the top very good. So anyway, this linear sharpener, my mom's invention, is awesome. It helps keep you cutting so you don't have to stop. And it will keep your blade sharp so you can continue sharp, um, sharpening them and finish cutting all your cuts as you're quilting. Okay. So my next rule of thumb is use the correct size ruler for your cuts. This 24 and a half by um, six and a half inch ruler is a really nice size and you can cut most of your cuts with it. But another important feature that we sell are our true grips. And our true grips are absolutely wonderful. Um, on the back of the mat, we have our true grips. Where do I have them, Mark? Oh, they're right here, okay? There's little silicone discs, so you get 15 large and 15 small. And you will put them on the backs of your rulers. There are little spots for them. And they help keep your ruler locked into place, so it's not going to veer off or go any place. So this ruler doesn't have any of the true grips on them. And you can see that it's going to slide across my fabric, and as I'm pushing against it, it's going to move my ruler to, from one side to the other. So using the true grips on your rulers or your templates. Carla, everybody's asking, they're seeing this, and I think they're going like, wow, 
that's pretty amazing. Yes, like that track in the guide, the ergonomics. I just love you just showed that sharpener. Um, everybody's wanting to know like, what is it? What is the price? And so if everybody's okay, I just wanted to really quickly bring up a screen. And these are a couple on the combos that she's talked about briefly. So like we actually have an electric sharpener which she hasn't gotten to yet. We have the quilters combo that's on there. This is one of the ones we're giving away that includes what she talked about, the, the ergonomic cutter that 20, that uh, six and a half by 24 and a half ruler and the true grips. So look at those. We've got that spring combos listed. We have a couple other, um, please reach out to, if you have questions, we're going to ask some of our, um, the account executives, please go ahead and make sure that our viewers also have a couple links to these. And then you feel free to call in and you can chat with us so we can get a couple more on there. Um, Outside of that, let's kind of move back because I know they just wanted to know what is this? How do we get it, Carla? And do you have any other thoughts on why you would encourage somebody to get some of the key things that you've already shared with them? And let's just go back to Carla here. The cutting can either be a chore, but it could also be a lot of fun. And and seeing those pieces, those pieces that you've cut out correctly using the correct measurements come together in a beautiful quilt, that's the end product. And so using the right tools and cutting it correctly makes that piecing come together so seamlessly. And, and so it's just really important for you to, you know, find what works best for you. Um, and then find the right height. Find a table that's a good height for you. I use my countertop to do a lot of my cutting, and I have this long island, and so I can work from one side to, and then go to the other side. So if I have a cut that I want to cut up this way, or if I want to flip my ruler around and not move my fabric, I will move to the other side. So maybe sometimes having a table that you can move from one side to the other without moving your fabric is also nice and easy to do or, you know, if you have the right area. So having the large enough mat so that you can turn your fabric and line it back up is really important as well. So use your mat and your ruler together. Some ladies like to just use their mat to cut and they're not using their ruler like they should. So learn to use the ruler. Learn to um, square up your fabric. And so an easy way, I'm going to show you an easy way to square up your fabric. Get your fabric here, put it along one of the lines of your ruler, okay? And then make sure it's aligned on the bottom. Or let's just use the fold line, okay? So we're going to use the fold line across the top here. And here's the fold where it's folded in half. And I'm cutting. I just wanted to show you. This is where, and this is my fold line. So I'm just going to line my fold line right here across the top. And I'm going to take my little square ruler and my six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. And I want to get it off to the edge right here as much as possible so I don't waste a lot of fabric. And then I'm lining it up here on this 12. But I'm going to take my square ruler right here as well so I can make sure that I nice and straight all the way up and that just helps to square up your ruler and um, square up your fabric and as you're cutting um, you may have to square up your fabric more than one time so just know that it will come out of square as you're cutting so just take your ruler have it handy and then square it up as many times as you need to no, you're not wasting a lot of fabric, and you're getting those nice straight cuts. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention is a good rule of thumb as well is not cutting more than four layers. The more layers you cut, the more uneven your cut, cuts are going to be. So with this one not being ironed, and it's very uneven and wrinkled, if you're cutting a wrinkled piece of fabric, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. And it's multiple layers. So I'm just going to fold it and show you what one looks like and why it's important for you to yeah, use this one. This one does not have the guide on it, so I'm able to cut through more fabric. So I'm just going to use my ruler and cut a two and a half inch strip. Let me just show you. 
I mean, that looks pretty good, but you can see the waves in it, and that you've got the wrinkles, and so see the waves in it. So that's why it's better to unfold it and fold it twice and make sure that you're not having too many folds to get those waves on it, and it'll give you more accurate cuts. A um, couple other things before we head into our next video is um, as you're cutting, it can be a tedious process. So stop and take a break if you need to. It's good to walk away and not sit there and keep moving because you'll make more mistakes. So it, it, like any quilter, if things are becoming very tiring and your back is starting to hurt or you're just starting to cut the wrong size, that means it's time to take a break um, from your cutting so that you can go get a drink or go relax for just a minute and then you can come back with fresh eyes and be more alert and more attentive to as you're cutting. And it also keeps you safer as you're cutting as well because you're not going to make a mistake and put your hand where you're not supposed to because you're going to be more attentive to as you're cutting. And I just want to wrap up by using good blades. Um, Good blades will allow you to sharpen them over and over again. If you haven't tried our blades, you need to. They are awesome. I love them. And they are made of a good steel that allows you to sharpen and, and keep them sharp with our, our sharpener, our, either our electric sharpener or our linear sharpener, and with the true grips. Um, so just really important to keep you easy keep everything easy and keep you safe and keep you more accurate. So as you get to the sewing machine with all those nice, beautiful pieces that you've cut, they're going to come together and they create that beautiful quilt top. Then you're going to be ready to quilt. Um, so when you're using your templates and your cutters, so on our, if you join me with Tuesdays with Grace, I've used the triangle rulers a lot. And I am going to come up with a quilt designed to use the kite ruler. For those of you who asked me what this one's used for, we'll come up with something. But you'll notice that they have a smooth back. So that as you're cutting, they're going to slide around because you're pushing on them. And if you haven't tried the tools that I've showed you here today, give them a try. You'll love them. I know you will. And I'm just excited to be able to show you all of our great innovative products and and like I said, I love quilting. I hope my passion and um, extends to you because it's something that I really enjoy doing and I love bringing you new ideas and new thoughts. So thanks for letting me share this with you today and um, I will see you soon.